Hello everybody, in this video we're going to talk about nucleosomes and it's going to get kind of scary when you see all the text that's going to show up but it's just for reference and we're going to try to talk about two specific things related to nucleosomes in this video. One of them is going to kind of be represented by this little family here that's holding hands and the idea that nucleosomes will help DNA to supercoil. So if you've heard of the word supercoiling, you know that that means that uh, DNA can basically wrap up really, really tight. So it can not only uh, wrap up, but the wrapped up bits can wrap up upon themselves. So it's not just coiling, it's multiple layers of coiling. So it gets this term as uh, supercoiling. And then one other thing that we're gonna talk about is how nucleosomes can play a role in helping to determine whether genes can get expressed or not. And if you think about DNA being wrapped up really tightly, you should understand that there are specific sections of DNA that code for genes, but if everything's wrapped up really tightly, it's hard to actually get in there and access the genes when it comes time to actually transcribing and translating them. So let me just reveal a lot of the things that are going on here, and then let's take a look and see if we can understand in basic English what is going on. So a little bit of background, some other random things you need to kind of know are that these nucleosomes, the way that DNA is wrapped up like this, it's only found in eukaryotic cells or eukaryotic organisms. So um, prokaryotic DNA is not arranged in kind of a supercoiling fashion with nucleosomes like this. So it's one thing you can add when you're asked to distinguish between prokaryotic and eukaryotic chromosomes. And that is that eukaryotes only contain these nucleosomes. So the structure actually looks something like this. Here's DNA wrapped around this thing. And this little ball in the middle is actually made up of eight histone proteins. There's one other special histone protein that's called H1. And it's kind of like the little glue or seal that kind of keeps this double loop structure in place. This can be removed when we need to. And there are other parts that will function to help us decide when we can uh, coil this up or loosen up the coils a little bit as well too. So here's the DNA that's coiled up and a little bit of linker DNA. So I'll reveal these labels in a second. The linker DNA is just going to connect it to the next nucleosome and you're going to have this repeating structure of double loops going on. What else do we have here? Um, you can't see in this diagram, but in these actual histo histone proteins, if you understand that proteins are made up of chains of amino acids, it's much more than a little white ball that you see here. It's actually a, a chain of amino acids, a fat, long amino acids that are all grouped together. And sticking out at the end of these is going to be something we'll see in a second called an N-terminal tail. It means there's going to be some bits of a chain of amino acids that's actually sticking out the side that has a nitrogen at the end of it, the amino end. That's why it's called the N-terminal tail. And we're going to see how that's important in a second as well too. So those N-terminal tails are kind of like the hands of this family. They're able to grab on to the next N-terminal tail from the next nucleosome and those kind of links between the little tails that are not really shown here. If I were to draw them in, it kind of looked like this little line here, but that's just a label line. But there would be a little hand here that would link to another hand sticking out of the next histone from the next nucleosome, and they can actually pull each other tight together like a family would pull each other, uh, pull themselves tight. They're not doing that, they're just walking over here. That's a bad choice of animation. So if you understand what I've been talking about so far, then this point will get you to the top level of really understanding and be really being able to tell the story in uh, great depth if you understand everything we've talked about so far. So those little N terminal caps can be modified. So what you can do is when you don't want the nucleosomes to hold on to each other so tightly, you can actually put an apple in the hand. And if, that, if there's an apple in the hand, then you can't hold hands with the person who's next to you. So you can actually block off these little N terminal tails by adding something called a methyl cap. If you know what methane is, methane is CH4, you pull off one of the H's and you end up with a CH3 group. It's called a methyl group, and in this case, we're going to call them a methyl cap. So it's kind of like putting a methyl cap onto the N terminal tail so that the hands can't hold anymore. And if the hands can't hold anymore, then that means the DNA can be looser. These nucleosomes can be looser and not be pulled so close together. So one of the reasons why we're able to see chromosomes during mitosis is because these hands are pulling each other together so tightly that the DNA condenses and we can actually see the chromosomes under a microscope. But during S phase, in interphase, when we're trying to replicate DNA, we want 
full access to the DNA. So we don't want these guys to hold hands with each other and pull together and coil really tightly. So these methyl caps can kind of sit on the end terminal tails and block them and prevent them from holding on to each other so the DNA can be more loose, not only for DNA replication, but also for allowing transcription and therefore gene expression to actually occur. So if it's actually loose and these little cap guys are blocking these end terminal tails, then they can't hold on to each other and that can allow polymerase enzymes in for replication or uh, RNA polymerase enzymes in for transcription. Because this process can allow enzymes to get in here, we can say the following, the very last bullet point here, which is that nucleosomes are therefore said to regulate transcription. Some sections remain condensed when the genes there are not being used. So these methyl caps, if they're on, then we can really spread out the nucleosomes and give access and then allow genes to get transcribed. So this whole story about nucleosomes here in a previous syllabus wouldn't be much more than you know a two-point uh, question where we're talking about define what a nucleosome is. It's a two coils of DNA wrapped around some histone proteins. But now you can take it a lot further and link it to replication. You can link it to supercoiling. You can link it to transcription. So I wouldn't be surprised if you would have a you know, fairly detailed question that could come up asking about the role of nucleosomes in DNA replication and also in transcription. So let's see if you can picture what actually we just talked about right here. So here's the nucleosome core, eight histone proteins in the center right there, a little bit of DNA connecting to the next one. Uh, here's the DNA looped around twice. There's that extra special histone protein called an H1 protein that's kind of holding it together. This thing can also come off when we need to actually be able to access the DNA. And there's some more DNA linking to the, the next chain of these nucleosomes. So here's a bunch of them when they're in a row. So you can see here's the DNA linker material that's in between uh, collecting these. So you can imagine uh, if these things get squeezed together, it can be a lot tighter. Right now they're looking pretty loose. Uh, these are the nucleosomes. And here is what I was referring to with the end terminal tails, which is something that would have stuck out the middle. You can see how these end terminal tails, if they can hold hands with each other, you can end up pulling the nucleosomes a lot tighter and closer together. When they're not holding hands, because something called a methyl cap can come block this and prevent these guys from connecting together, then we can really loosen up these nucleosomes and therefore allow access to these enzymes to help in the process of replication or transcription. Intuitively, it's not too hard to understand the idea that if you want to access something, it can't be so squishy, otherwise anything that you need to get in there is not going to fit. So it's being able to link the big picture idea of what you understand about what a cell needs to do with its DNA with these uh, kind of scary looking biochemistry terms with N-terminal tails and decondensing and methyl caps and everything like that. So don't be too scared about all of this. Hopefully that made it a little bit more clear for you.